Oh yeah, today we're learning English with Will Smith. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it, all right? <laughs> it's, that, was a, that was a nice one, okay. I'm out here, uh-oh, Richard. <laughs> oh, wow, wow. We've all been in situations where we've either been offended or upset by something someone said or did. Knowing how to respond in that moment is very important because it could affect your reputation and your relationship with others. In today's lesson, we'll look at a clip that went viral of Will Smith at the 94th Academy Award ceremony, as well as a scene from the hit movie, King Richard. You will learn how not to respond if someone offends you, as well as the language to use in these types of situations. Just so you know, this lesson does include swear words, which can be inappropriate for sensitive viewers. But before we get into that, if you would like to watch your favorite movies and TV series without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without needing subtitles, then be sure to hit that subscribe button and bell down below so you never miss out on any of our new lessons. Just like one of our 5 million community members, Zara, who says that since watching our lessons daily, they have improved their vocabulary, listening, and pronunciation skills. You know who's got the hardest job tonight? Javier Bardem and his wife are both nominated. Now, if she loses, he can't win! <laughs> <laughs> he is praying that Will Smith wins. Like, please, Lord! Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it, all right? <laughs> A, that was a nice one, okay. I'm out here, uh-oh, Richard. <laughs> oh, wow, wow. Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. Keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth. Wow, dude. Yes. It was a G.I. Jane jump. Keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth! I'm going to, okay? <laughs> oh, I could, oh, okay. That was a greatest night in the history of television. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Javier Bardem and his wife are both nominated. The word nominated is the past tense of the verb to nominate, which means an official suggestion that someone should be considered to do a particular job, receive an honor, or be awarded a prize. It's very common for entertainers, especially comedians, at award shows to make jokes about the people who are nominated. There are a lot of big films that didn't get nominated this year. Nothing for Sex in the City 2. Um, no, I was sure the Golden Globe for special effects would go to the team that airbrushed that poster. Um. Now, if she loses, he can't win! Here, Chris Rock is implying that if Javier wins the award but his wife Penelope loses, she would be very angry and make him feel so bad that he would not be able to enjoy his success completely. This sentence is an example of a zero conditional. We use the zero conditional to talk about permanent truths, such as scientific facts and general habits. This conditional has two parts, the if clause in the simple present plus the result in the simple present. We generally use a comma to separate them as in this example. If I'm tired, I go to bed early. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it, all right? This joke is a reference to the 1997 movie G.I. Jane starring Demi Moore with short shaved hair which resembles Jada's hair. However, Jada previously explained publicly that she shaved her hair because she suffers from alopecia, a hair loss condition. You know, I was in the shower one day and then just handfuls of hair just in my hands and I was just like, oh my God, am I going bald? Mm -hmm. 
this joke can be seen as offensive because Chris is making fun of a medical condition that Jada cannot control. The first thing we can learn from this is, take a breath and think of the consequences. Before you respond, always consider the outcome of your words and actions. We'll later apologize to Chris, but face a lot of negative criticism, as well as consequences from the Film Academy. Here are some polite ways to tell someone that you are offended by what they said. I'm not sure if you realize, but what you said was pretty inconsiderate. I feel really hurt by what you are saying. That is an inappropriate thing to say. <laughs> oh, wow! Wow! Chris uses the interjection wow several times. In this context, it expresses shock and surprise. Yeah, it's just that you're the smartest one in the family and you always rub it in and it doesn't make us feel good. Wow, I am so sorry. I feel terrible that I've been making you guys feel this way. We could say that at that moment, Chris was at a loss for words, which means he was unable to think of anything to say. Which of these exclamations is also used to express shock? A. Ah, B, O, C, hey. All of them. Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. This is an exaggerated expression, which means that it should not be taken literally. To smack the shit out of someone means to hit them very hard with the palm of your hand. See a kid with a bicycle helmet on? I'm gonna smack the shit out of him, like for his own good. We use the word shit in many different ways. For example, the original meaning of shit is to defecate. Or, if something or someone is shit, they are bad or of bad quality. However, if something or someone is the shit, we mean that they or it is of very high quality. Why not pause the lesson and let us know down in the comments if you would like to learn more about how to use swear words in English. Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. Here Chris uses connected speech. Notice how smacked and the flow into each other. So it sounds like smack the. Also, the t sound at the end of out sounds like a d sound. Could you hear that the of is pronounced as a schwa or a sound? So together, it sounds like smack the shit out of. Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. When we tell someone to keep a word or name out of their mouth, we mean that they should not say it or we don't want them to talk about it. Will does not want Chris to make fun of his wife. Yeah, fuck No, you. no, fuck Yvette, man. Cause she the one got your ass round up like a motherfucking clock. Hey, look here, you dirt rascal pip. You keep my wife's name out your mouth, you hear me? As an adjective or adverb, the word fucking can be used to emphasize or add force to a statement. You just invited me into the chicken coop. And without daddy around to protect you, I'm gonna eat you all, one by fucking one. What we can learn from this is, choose the right moment to address the problem. Always assess the situation so you know the most appropriate way to respond. Will was angry and raised his voice while using swear words during an award ceremony that was broadcast around the world. An alternative would be that he could have addressed this with Chris in private and said, I didn't appreciate what you just said. Please stop making fun of my wife. I would prefer that you stop joking about my wife. Keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth! Will also uses connected speech. The word out flows into the next word, which is y'all. Notice that the yes sound becomes a ch, so it sounds like, keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth. Which of these is a less offensive way of saying fucking? Is it A, darn, B, freaking, or C, flipping? All of them. Let's look at these examples of how they're used. Folks, this ever happened to you? You go to the refrigerator to get a nice glass of milk, but these darn tarts are so fling and flang and hard to open. Well, you said it, Mike. I don't... Oh, oh. <laughs> oh I went to 
wait, so what, what you're saying is that the, the chef is at the Hamilton Club, but the food is not, and the drinks are there, but the bartender is not? Are, are, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> well, we cannot tell Joey about this. He's already flipping out about everything that's changing. This will push him over the edge. Do you want to be able to watch absolutely anything in English without needing subtitles? If understanding the jokes, culture, and absolutely every word is important to you, then our free three-part masterclass is just what you need to speak English more confidently and naturally. Simply sign up now by clicking up here or down in the description box below. After his confrontation with Chris Rock, Will Smith went on to win the Oscar for Best Actor in the movie King Richard, where he played Richard Williams, father of tennis superstars Venus and Serena. So let's look at a scene from that movie where Richard has a confrontation with tennis coach Rick Macy. You know, all I hear from you is pressure, 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 pressure. But you know what I see? On TV, I see it every day. I see the Richard Williams show. A million dollars, number one, the greatest of all time. You don't think that adds pressure? It adds confidence. That's bullshit. It's about you. Now look, you want to jerk my chain, go on and jerk it, but do not do it to those girls. Rick, all, all respects, dude. We, we love you. you. You like a member of our family. But you work for us. I wrote this plan. plan. And when I say she's not playing, she is not playing. I call the shots. And I'm sorry if you don't like that. Richard, screw your frickin' plan. You don't know what you're doing. You don't. That is a nice house, by the way. Remind me, who pays for that? Don't do that. Don't do that. You're a better man than that. I hear from you is pressure, 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 pressure. Pressure means to strongly persuade someone to do something that they do not want to do. Here, Rick is telling Richard that he is putting too much pressure on his daughters. Santiago, you're putting yourself under too much pressure, and that stress is making it even harder for you to quit. Some things might come easier to you if you stop being such a perfectionist. You don't think that adds pressure? It adds confidence. That adds bullshit. It's about you. Although Rick and Richard are disagreeing, here we can learn, stay calm. Even though Rick is upset and swearing, Richard stays calm and does not raise his voice or use aggressive language. Bullshit is a swear word that we use when we think that what someone says or did is stupid, untrue, or unacceptable. Both of you think you're just gonna walk away from this thing? Never gonna happen. That is not what we're saying. Enough with the bullshit! We also use this word to mean that something is of bad quality. For example, the movie was complete bullshit. The production was terrible. As this word can be offensive, it should not be used in sensitive situations or in front of certain people, perhaps your grandparents or your boss. Now look, you want to jerk my chain, go on and jerk it, but do not do it to those girls. To jerk means to pull. But to jerk someone's chain is an expression that means to tease someone, often by trying to convince them that something is true when it isn't. You could also say to pull or yank someone's chain. I got a movie for you. Oh yeah, what? About NTL. What's NTL? <laughs> What's NTL? What are you, joking? No. You're pulling my chain. Mm -mm. Nothing to lose records. Hello, come on, it's like the indie label. Great. All, all respects, dude. We, we love you. you. You like a member of our family. But you work for us. Notice how tactfully Richard uses his words here. We can learn. Speak respectfully. All respects due, or with all due respect, is used as a polite or formal way of saying that you disagree with someone. It makes the other person feel that you are not aggressive or trying to be mean. I'm holding a large ownership position open for you. I hope you approve. Actually, frankly, all due respect, I think you owe me this. 
because I came to you about Adriana. Here are some examples of polite ways to disagree with someone in English. I'm afraid I don't agree with your plan. To be honest, I don't approve of your suggestion. I beg to differ, this is not the best solution. Richard politely disagrees with Rick as he first expresses positive feelings and then adds the negative points at the end. This is similar to the feedback sandwich, which is a form of feedback that wraps negative feedback in praise. I call the shots. And I'm sorry if you don't like that. To call the shots means to be in charge or in control of a situation. So Richard is saying that he's in a position to make decisions that will influence the situation. Uh, okay, believe it or not, my friends do not get a vote on who I date. It's my life. I call the shots. Ted, now! Yeah, coming! <laughs> we could even say that he agrees to disagree, which is an expression we use if two people have a disagreement and they decide to stop arguing because neither of them is going to change their opinion. It is usually a good expression you can use at the end of an argument. For example, let's agree to disagree. Richard, screw your frickin' plan. In this context, screw is used as a euphemism or a polite way of saying the swear word fuck. It is usually used for expressing anger, especially when you disagree with or defy someone. So, they bought a nice house at the end of the cul-de-sac started their nuclear family. Screw that. Yeah. Screw that. An even softer euphemism for this would be to hell with, as in, to hell with your freaking plan. That is a nice house, by the way. Remind me, who pays for that? Don't do that. Don't do that. You're a better man than that. You're better than that is used to express disappointment when someone makes a mistake which they probably shouldn't have. It is usually used to show that you don't approve of someone's actions. Another expression with a similar meaning is, you should be ashamed of that. For example, he cheated on the test, he should be ashamed of that. Friendship rankings, what's that? It's not what it sounds like, it's simply a way for me to figure out which one of you is the best. That's messed up. Yeah, that is really lame, and I'm leaving. You're better than that, nope. Donna, why are you angry? So today we looked at four things you can learn from Will Smith about dealing with offensive situations. Take a breath and think of the consequences. Choose the right moment to deal with the problem. Stay calm. Speak respectfully. Now let's do a quick quiz to see how much you've learned by watching without subtitles and answering some questions. <laughs> it's, that, was a, that was a nice one, okay. I'm out here. Uh-oh, Richard. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow! Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. Keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth! Wow, dude! Which of these words also means shit? A. Amazing. B. Terrible. C. Defecate. Now look, you want to jerk my chain, go on and jerk it, but do not do it to those girls. Rick, all, all respects, dude. We, we love you. you. You like a member of our family. But you wait for us. I wrote this plan. plan. And when I say she's not playing, she is not playing. I call the shots. And I'm sorry if you don't like that. Richard, screw your frickin' plan. You don't know what you're doing. You know. Which of these swear words is the same as screw? Is it A, fuck, B, shit, or C, ass? You know, all I hear from you is pressure, 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 pressure. But you know what I see? On TV, I see it every day. I see the Richard Williams show. A million dollars, number one, the greatest of all time. You don't think that adds pressure? It adds confidence. That's bullshit. It's about you. 
Now look, you want to jerk my chain, go on and jerk it, but do not do it to those girls. What could Rick have said instead of bullshit? A. Nah, that's obvious. B. Nah, that's not true. Or C. Nah, that's great. If you enjoyed this lesson, then be sure to share it with a friend who is also learning English and check out this lesson next. The T plus vowel plus N combination at the end. Let's take the word gotten. When we say the letter T, our tongue goes up and down. It touches the roof of your mouth and then comes back down. T, T.